Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, today, uh, we have the, a panel about doctoral programs, lessons, and challenges. Uh, this is the ISLA conference, Information Systems in Latin America conference, uh, which is organized by La CAIS, by the Latin American and the Caribbean Association of Information Systems, which is a chapter of the Association of Information Systems. So, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, we have here uh, today in this uh, panel, uh, our guests are uh, George Maracas from Florida International University. Uh, he is a full professor of information systems and business analytics, and he is the associate dean for research and doctoral studies at Florida International University. Thank you very much for joining us, George. The next uh, panelist is uh, Jose Antonio Robles, uh, director of the doctoral programs at ESAN Graduate School of Business in Peru. Also, uh, thank you, Jose, for joining and pretty much uh, putting together uh, the, the questions for our panel today and, and the paper. Um, we also have Cesar uh, Alexander de Souza from University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And he has, again, um, several roles, but has served as the vice coordinator of the PhD program at uh, University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And I think with agreements from other universities, uh, definitely a long experience with doctoral programs as well. And myself, I am um, a faculty in computer information systems, but I have been working as director of doctoral studies in the College of Business I tried at Trident University International. I have been there for 16 years and as directors for eight, uh, um, eight years. And, um, uh, I was working at Trident in that role up until August 5th last week. So I can definitely talk about the doctoral programs, but I am uh, changing uh, positions. Uh, but uh, again, I'm still interested on the doctoral programs and I'm looking forward to discussing uh, this topic. So what we have in common is we do have education information systems. Uh, we are information systems researchers. Uh, we work uh, for, we have worked or currently work for doctoral programs in a college of business. So uh, that's a characteristic that uh, could be, I mean, the way we approach the programs, it could be different than other um, professors from other uh, universities. But again, this is how we are coming to this topic. Uh, we have experience in administration of doctoral programs and experience, of course, uh, mentoring, uh, chairing doctoral students. Now, um, as an overview, we talk about how doctoral programs are, are, are growing. I mean, it's a small growth. This, this data is from the National Science Foundation here in the United States. Uh, so I couldn't find data from uh, this, the, the stage of the doctoral programs in other countries, uh, but uh, we definitely have seen some growth. And uh, some of that is um, due to um, also the launch of professional doctorates and also, of course, as everywhere in the world, uh, using online programs uh, and some part-time basis. So, so these are some of the uh, factors that influence this whole uh, topic. And we're gonna talk more about how you see those aspects and any others in your own programs. But specifically, uh, we're going to try to focus on uh, topics related to information systems in general, and even narrowing down even more, if possible, discussing how this could affect to uh, students, uh, researchers, uh, programs in Latin America. So in this panel, again, we'll talk about the characteristics of doctoral programs, challenges, opportunities, uh, the importance of research and publications for um, in, doctoral programs in information systems. And again, finally, what about Latin America? So um, this was just an introduction of what we want to accomplish. So let's begin. Um, um, Dr. I mean, George Maracas, I, I don't know how formal you want to go, but Dr. Maracas, would you like to start uh, with your thoughts and comments and your experience? And then we can um, go back and discuss with the entire group. Sure, Indira, I'll be, I'll be happy to. Uh, first of all, I, I'm very happy to be here and to talk about doctoral programs because I've kind of, uh, it's one of the areas that I've devoted myself to over 30 some years of academic life. I just finished, I just completed my, chairing my 40th dissertation. And, uh, and so I got a lot of academic children out there. 
the uh, in in my world, um, doctoral programs uh, encompasses both uh, a PhD across uh, six di disciplines in our College of Business and our DBA, our Doctorate in Business Administration program, which is uh, multidisciplinary, uh, focusing on applied research, but very heavily heavily uh, focused on research, very rigorous in terms of. Uh, in terms of the curriculum. The, the, I think the most important thing we need to look at about doctoral programs, and, and I've counseled a lot of faculty on this. Well, actually there's three. The first is the doctoral program isn't really for the students. It's for the faculty. The doctoral program is a resource to the research productive faculty of an institution. Uh, its byproduct is that we extend our legacy and, uh, and, and, and we produce uh, new members of the academy and new entrants to the professorate. But if a, if a doctoral program isn't being uh, administered for the benefit of the faculty, and if the faculty are not engaged in that doctoral program, uh, it's, it's going to be a dismal failure for all the parties and the students become the victims. Uh, the second thing that I think is important to note about doctoral programs is that of all the products that we manufacture, uh, the undergrads, the master's students, the MBAs, the MSIS, et cetera, et cetera, uh, doctoral students are the only handcrafted product in academia. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're not delivered in a formulaic manner. Certainly there are formulas that we follow and are in most cases emulating our mentors but it's it's very much a handcrafted product we we develop a relationship that lasts a lifetime with this the our students uh we have to respond to their unique needs and their unique um uh perspectives on the world and perspectives on our field uh and, and we have to bring them to a point of socialization uh, in the professorate that, uh, that makes them a good colleague, a productive researcher, uh, and, a, and a, a scholarly thinker. Uh, the third thing about doctoral programs that I've learned over 30 years is that just because you have a PhD doesn't mean you know anything about doctoral education or mentoring doctoral students. And this is a big problem because the PhD suddenly becomes this union card that uh, that allows you to take on the life of a of a, a prospective uh, academic. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you can mess that up pretty bad. And that that really brings me to my fourth conclusion, which is no matter what your experience. Uh, at best, you're going to teach the way you learned. If you had a lousy experience as a doctoral student, you're going to be a lousy mentor, and your students are going to be an, uh, uh, your students are going to are going to go through life feeling very unpleasant about the whole thing. If you had a very pleasant and collegial and social experience, uh, you're going to be uh, one of the most popular people amongst the students because you're going to naturally treat your students as colleagues and uh, and and mentor them into the professor instead of make them bleed for three or four years and and until they they're, they're out of blood okay let's let's give them a phd and then go get another victim uh and we i mean we all know that they're out there that you know we, we've all met them hopefully none of us have experienced them but uh but but we know that they're out there so uh of those four things, I think I tend to focus on the handcrafting. I, I, I'm really enamored by being able to to work with someone one on one and see them develop and and uh, and learn from them, uh, and uh, and then watch all the great things that they do for the academy. So that's my two minute perspective. I guess probably took three minutes. Excellent, very good. I love the handcrafted uh, 
attitudes is perfect you know it's just yeah exactly that's how it is that's why you can't you can't do the same with everybody yeah uh, excellent okay so um um who would like to go next Cesar would you like to go next yes thank you Indira <laughs> well first first of all I would like to thank uh Alexandre Indira for and Jose for inviting me to participate here at this panel. It's an honor to be with you here with Professor George and Jose and Alexandre uh, and everyone. And uh, I, I, I just would like to add one, one thing more is that, is that uh, I know uh, Alexandre Grêmio for a long time and he, uh, I remember when he was talking to me 10, 10 years ago or something like this about integrating Brazil into the Latin America community. It was always his, his motivation. He was very eager to do this. I'm very happy to see that he, he and all the group, of course, did this so to, to see colleagues from, from Latin America and the States. Very, very good. Uh, good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This is my introduction. I am, uh, I've been vice coordinator here at FEA USP, actually uh, in the PhD program, PhD and master's program, and uh, for, during four years. And actually, we, we are in a business school. And I, I was one of the few professors in a, the IS group here. And we had a strong IS group during the, 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 the 2000s, 2010, the AS, since the 90s, something like this, we had lots of students uh, in, in our group uh, researching uh, uh, IS implementation, IS uh, development and governance and stuff like this. I myself was one of uh, these, these students but uh, and and now specifically regarding this these students and uh, information system students in our in my school we now have only me as there's only one professor left in the group in the is group that's me and they completely changed my focus to more strategic and stuff like uh, digital transformation and new business model, digital business model, something, something like this, because of, I, I, I do not have, I, it's, um, I, I do like this, this stuff, okay? And we, we are uh, having the, the difficulty in attracting new, new information systems or information manage, management students to our, uh, to our group here, okay? And, and this was one of the, the challenges that I, I would like to, to, to talk about two challenges I see with the focus of the business school uh, professor trying to, to, to get new students who would uh, learn, uh, who would uh, research on, on information systems. I see that we, we during the, the 90s and 2000s, Alexandre that, that, that told me this uh, in one, one discussion that we had, we had a very strong research agenda that was the uh, IT doesn't matter agenda. We had to prove that he was wrong. Okay, Nicholas Carr was wrong. So everybody was engaged in this research uh, agenda. It's, we were very motivated. We had uh, something to follow. And now I, I think it seems that the research agenda on information systems is, is uh, more diffuse, I think, more vague. This is one, one issue we have here. One difficulty and, and, and another difficulty is that we with this all stuff the, the digital transformation everybody's talking about digital transformation for me it was a blast to to see that everyone now understands what we were talking 20 years ago and they they do, do, do uh, I think that it, it, yes uh, tech, digital technology is important but on the other hand I see several parts of our research going to other areas, uh, strategy and marketing and finance. And so we are uh, 
there's a little little thing left for us here. The cybersecurity. I'm not into cybersecurity. I don't like it. And and of course, IT governance. I don't like IT governance as well. So so I see uh, the students are. Uh, we have a few students. That's not that's the case of my my school and uh, several others. But you have in Brazil the Fundação Getúlio Vargas that has a, still have. I. Uh, it still has a strong group of IES um, researchers. So, so I think these are the challenges on, on, on the specific view of a uh, of, uh, 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 professor in IS in a school, business school. Uh, another, another issue is, is to get and retain young talents. Uh, it's difficult, we, we have, uh, each time we have less uh, students that are interested in have a full-time PhD here, it's, it's the case in, in Brazil, okay, at Sao Paulo, many of them have uh, have to work. We, we don't have the students that have uh, full dedication, mostly. The scholarships are, are very few uh, uh, ways, so, so we have so, so difficult to retain good, good, good students and talents. These are the, the challenges and difficulties I see here in Brazil, at least at my, my university. And uh, the, the challenges. And, and I see the question of publication. We, we completely changed this. We were able to, to, do, to do this thanks to, to CAPS, our regulating uh, agency here in Brazil that imposed us to, to go ahead. So, so we did. And now every student that, that come here has, has the, the understands that he must write his uh, PhD thesis in English. All my students now have to, to, to write in English and, and be prepared to, to submit to, to, to international journals. This is something that we are uh, moving, uh, it's improving here in, in Brazil, I, I think, okay? I'm not sure if it was, uh, I had a very uh, defined line of, of reason, but I, I just uh, talked about several challenges and opportunities, but of course I'm, I'm here to, to discuss and contribute to, to the discussion. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, very good, excellent. I think that there are things that we definitely have in common. And so let, let's see what, uh, what do you have to say for us? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, Indira. And, and thank you, uh, George and, and, and Cesar. It's actually my honor to be here sitting with you. Uh, you have way more experience than, than, than I do, so, so it is actually my pleasure to, to be here. But uh, I, I think I can share a few things that uh, we've been doing here in, in Peru and, and in, in my collaboration with some other schools in Latin America and also being part of a European association of doctoral programs where, um, where we've been able to, to be part of the, um, uh, of the executive committee of, of this association. So I, I was able to, to learn, I've been learning so much in, in the last few, few years as a director of, of the program, not only here, in our program, but actually um, looking at other programs. So, so, so let, let me share some, some of the, 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 the things that I've been learning that of course I may be biased, but, 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 but this is what I see. Uh, first of all, I, I, I want to, to give you my view of what, it, what are the doctoral programs in information systems in, in Latin America. And to my knowledge, as far as I know, there is actually no really specific programs in information systems. I, I believe there must be some in, in Brazil that probably I don't know of, but in the rest of Latin America, doctoral programs are mostly in, in, in business, in business administration. I, again, I, I, I haven't really 
known any specific problems problems in information systems. And, and one of the, the main issues is that actually we still don't know in, I mean, here in our group, we, we, we do have a clear idea of what information systems is, what, what is the, the discipline, pretty much, because we, I guess we are always in doubts about that. And when, when I attend conferences, I, I always see the discussion, what is information systems, right? But, but I mean, we have a, a, a clear understanding, but, but in, in general, for, for the general public in, in Latin America, it's completely different. Uh, and yesterday we were talking about that. And, and like I, I mentioned that, that for example, in, in the university where I work at the Sun, uh, we actually have a, a, a program, an undergraduate program in information systems, but it's, it's engineering, like systems and, and technology engineering. But if you look at the program is, I don't know, like at least 70%, it is information systems. Why we have it as an engineering? Because parents and of course students, they want to become engineers. So it's like, like it's better to be an engineer, you know? So I, actually myself, I, I'm an engineer in, in computer science, but maybe 50% of my program was actually information systems. And so and on the other hand, we have like many, 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 way too many doctoral programs in, in business, in business administration. And, and well, I'll, I'll talk about that in, uh, later, but for example, at ESAN, we have we also have the PhD in business administration, and it, it's actually the student who chooses the concentration. It could be strategy, it could be information systems, it could be marketing, it could be human resources, and that is based on the subject area of the dissertation, and, and of course, who is going to be your, your supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what is happening is that there is also no clear understanding if if we are what what it, what in the rest of the world is is known as a DBA or a PhD, although even in the U.S. there is no clear uh, definition of what is a DBA and a, and a PhD. And of course, both are valuable. But the problem I think in Latin America is that we don't make a difference. So so be, because we are not even aware of of, of a possible difference. So, so what I've been learning in, in terms of lessons, this is a very difficult market because of all of this, because of all these beliefs, as I mentioned, like being an engineer is better than, than being an administrator uh, or a bachelor in, in administration and, and many other beliefs. We, um, I, I think we also need to know what type of program we as a schools are going to develop with our students? Is it going to be a scientific program or an applied program? I think it's very hard to, to have a mixture. So, so having just one program for those who want to become researchers and those who want to continue uh, a career as a as, as general manager, as president of the company, um, I, I think it's, it's very difficult. Uh, it, it is also very difficult that this is this hard lesson because it's very difficult to have a full-time program. We actually gave up and at least so far we haven't been able to have a full-time program in, in, as a doctoral program. And well, okay, George already mentioned and I think that's pretty clear. Many schools, many, many, I think most of the schools actually believe that they can make money out of a doctoral program. And George already explained and very well. No, is the, the the reason is the reason to have a doctoral program is the faculty, so so it's, it's never going to be making money, unless in I don't know maybe somebody can come up with with some idea. But this is not a a way of making money for the for the school. And George also mentioned that the faculty needs to be committed, and that is also difficult. Okay, it's, it's not very easy, but and we actually struggle with that 
I, I, I have to go and convince my colleagues of, of being part of the doctoral program uh, one by one, okay? We, we, we have, uh, we need many, many dissertation supervisors. So actually you are all invited to become co-advisors for, for my doctoral students. The, in terms of challenges, English. I think that's, that's the big challenge. I know in here, maybe we're not all in agreement that, that our students need to learn English, that we should be doing doctoral programs in our own languages, in Spanish, in Portuguese. But I think that's useless because they have to read papers in English. We're not going to translate the papers for them. We are not going to translate uh, uh, MISQ, JMIS, ISR, we're not going to translate th those papers for them. So unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, but they need to learn English. So, so that, that, that is a must, and, and that is a big challenge. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel as the new generations, they are closer to learning English and because of the internet and cable TV and, well, cable TV not anymore, but YouTube and, and all of these, probably um, the kids now, the, 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 the new generations are learning English much faster and, and in an easier way. Also disseminating what is a doctoral program? What, at least what is it that we want to have as a doctoral program? One of those huge beliefs that inhibits uh, many people uh, from, from coming to a doctoral program or actually brings a lot of people to a doctoral program, but with the wrong belief, with the wrong, with the wrong understanding is that they think they are going to learn more about running a business or managing technology. And, and we know it's not like that. At least in, in my school, in, in our program, we actually want to, uh, what George mentioned, we are trying to, to focus on, on research and of course on the faculty research. And it's a byproduct that, that, that we have uh, graduates from, from the doctoral program. It's kind of, it's kind of um, weird because our students, they still have to pay. So it's kind of strange that, that we make them pay. So we get the research, you know, uh, and, and that, that is also part of, of the challenge. I think it's, it is a challenge itself deciding whether we want to do science or we want to do applied research in, in our programs. Um, I, I find that to, to, to be a challenge. We decided to go for the research program, very research oriented, and, and it's tough. It's difficult actually to convince the students um, about doing this because the majority, they, they you know, they, they, they want to be practitioners. So, so they, they kind of don't, don't care much about uh, doing, doing scientific research. Actually, the other day I was talking to, to one of uh, our students who graduated uh, less than two years ago. And he was telling me, I came to the doctoral program because my boss had a PhD and he told me that if I get a PhD, then I have better chances of replacing him when he when he leaves the, the, the company. And he and, and the boss had plans to leave the company. So he said, I need to do a PhD like really quick. So I can I can I can get his, his job. And uh, so he came to our program and actually he he says that it was here at the sun where we converted him into becoming a, 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 a faculty, a, a researcher and, and, and a faculty member. Um, but that was not his intention. So, and, and actually he's a really, really good researcher. He's, he's publishing like crazy, more than most of our faculty. So we are like very, very happy. Uh, he's, he's one of our stars. So, so but that's, that's just a few, very, very few people like, like him. Um, I think there is also a need as, as, a, as a big challenge to, to break the myth 
that because we live, work, and we get educated in Latin America and we get our doctoral program in Latin America, we cannot publish in top journals because that is for, you know, only for the US, for Canada, for Europeans. And, and, and I think that, that, is, that is not true. Um, and, and actually this student, the one that I was talking about, he's publishing in top journals. It's, it's not easy because, because uh, we all know that it's, 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 not, it's not easy to publish in, in good journals, in top journals, that sometimes you need, you need a father, you need a grand, an academic grandfather to, to be able to, to at least start in, with one big publication, but, but, but he's doing it. And, and actually that's what we are doing. We are connecting with top researchers who are opening the doors for, for our students. Also breaking another myth, I, I call it the, the myth of modesty, that our research is, and we always put it in the title of our research, in our country, in Peru, in Lima, in Bolivia, in, you know, because of the sample, um, as opposed to arriving to general conclusions, general, being able to generalize to, to the universe. It's, it's, it's not because of the sample, it's how you, how you um, sample, how you, you, you get your sample. So, so it's, it's, it's a design issue. It's, 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 not, it's, it's not because you are in Latin America, you cannot have uh, general conclusions. That, 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 that is more into our students because they, they, they have this notion of, I'm coming from a small country, from a small region, and I, I cannot go, um, I cannot compete. You know, and, and I think that that is not true either. So, but it's still a challenge. Th those are my general views. I, I hope they, they, they help some, somehow. <laughs> Very good. Yes, great, great points. Um, I would just uh, like to add to, uh, based on my experience, the challenge is on, um, and it's a follow up to what you have said, you know, the understanding the differences between PhD programs and the the traditional PhD programs versus the professional doctorate programs, you know, like the PhD versus a DBA. Mm -hmm. So that has been a problem with us. Like we used to have a PhD, traditional PhD program with about 150 students. And then we created the DBA program and it became very successful. Uh, so now the PhD shrunk, you know, like uh, to a third to what it used to be, but then the DBA got from nothing to a double to what the PhD used to be, you know, like more than 200 DBA students versus like uh, right now the PhD 60, 70 students. So you see how the difference, right? So it, it changed that perspective because we then intentionally started explaining to uh, prospective students and, and faculty and the program itself uh, that the PhD is the traditional PhD, more academic scholarly program versus the DBA is the professional um, um, type of program where students go back to industry when they are done. And that kind of approach helped us a lot because then the students, when they apply, they know, okay, if I want uh, to go back to industry because I want that promotion that you were talking about, you know, I am working in industry and I want that recognition promotion, then that's where I go to the DBA. If I want the traditional PhD because I am already an academic and I want to continue as an academic, publish, uh, do research, then that's how I should go to a PhD. So that kind of intentional, um, uh, presentation and curriculum and structure. So it's everything uh, made, it, made those programs uh, be different, right? So if they are different from the very beginning, you know that this is not, you're doing not a PhD or you are uh, not in a DBA, those are the expectations, then uh, that helped, that helped uh, a lot. And I have seen that uh, transformation. So that I think uh, was a, a challenge, but because Again, everybody needs to understand faculty because sometimes you have a faculty that expects a traditional research from somebody who's a professional doctor. So you have to put that on the faculty, again, in the curriculum, even the material that you read, the expectations, and even the methodology. So we put a lot of a structure on that. It's like more really more qualitative um, versus being more quantitative or or. Um, looking at um, hypotheses, expecting a, gener a discussion on generalizability or some kind of theoretical contribution. So I think that made, made a lot of difference. In terms of uh, uh, also um, between opportunity and challenge, 
is at the use of technology. I think things have changed a lot in terms of uh, using doc uh, and promoting doctoral programs. In the past, you know, how uh, even uh, tools that we had to um, search and um, uh, neural networks or, I mean, any tool that we used when I did my dissertation, uh, those tools have changed. Now it's very easy to find uh, instruments, even uh, statistical methods, you know, are, 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 have, are more advanced now. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, search engines or, or programs that allow to develop your literature review, you know, there, there are just so many more tools now. And I think that that is an opportunity to, um, to help doctoral students in, in, in increasing the quality, but also uh, finishing uh, faster, you know, because that I, if you recall, I mean, many years uh, uh, when I was doing my PhD, we had many students who just took uh, many, many years, long, long years to finish a PhD. It was like, oh, six, seven years, that's normal. You know, <laughs> had students 10 years. So that is an opportunity, I think, the technology. Now, the other thing that I see also as an opportunity uh, and kind of a challenge too, is that working with doctoral students, at least in my experience, it has been mostly adult learners who already work full-time or maybe part-time. And these adult learners, they uh, have, so they know what you do, but it's an opportunity because they bring their experience, their own professional experience. So when they choose topics, uh, they sometimes choose topics that are very relevant to the society or to industry because they know they, they know what they're talking about. You know, maybe somebody worked 15 years in banking, so they know how the bank operates. So they so if you if you start teaching them and talking about theories, they can uh, more easily theorize you know, that reality that they have lived for many years and now be able to say, oh yeah, maybe the, this model makes sense or doesn't, but you know, how about this? How about because they have that practical experience? So that has been an opportunity to um, for uh, developing interesting topics, relevant topics. When we just talk about how bridging the gap with practice, you know, there's a lot of uh, conversation about that, trying to bridge that gap with, between theory and practice. You know, I remember uh, um, the Academy of Management and even a, a CSB, you know, that there's a lot of discussion about bridging that gap. And I think with that, that kind of a student who comes with that linked and rich work experience, sometimes it's easier to to theorize and, and you know bridge that gap. However, at the same time, that also becomes a, a challenge because um, for some, you know, they are just closing the practical approach and and, uh, and it's hard to 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 use the, the appropriate literature. So um, I think those are just uh, important topics that that I think again bring that opportunity. Now, in terms of information systems itself, uh, being in a college of business, uh, I mean, technology is everywhere now. I mean, students who are doing marketing research, sometimes they, there's an overlap with information systems, but sometimes the challenge comes when we have students who are maybe more, way too technical. You know, it's more like a computer science kind of dissertation and it's not, uh, it doesn't have the business or societal uh, uh, impact that it's being considered. So that's, uh, uh, it, that's something that could happen as well. But, um, so, yeah, but, but again, that's something that could be, um, we would have to overcome. And, um, and finally, I just want to highlight again what, um, what you have been saying about the faculty. I mean, finding the right faculty to chair and serve as committee member, I mean, it's just a big challenge because it has to be, uh, it has to be kind of like one, one at a time. Uh, so um, now, um, for Latin America, I see lots of opportunities. I mean, we have been, uh, I, I think they're just following up on the discussion that we had, there should be more collaboration because um, there are very few doctoral programs in Latin America. There are very few doctoral programs in Latin America, but there are uh, people who are interested in pursuing doctoral programs. So uh, I don't know if you, if you know of any agreements with the universities, uh, with Latin America and other countries, but I think there is a definitely a opportunity for growth there because there are people interested in doctoral programs, but um, sometimes not, uh, they don't have all the tools, right? Uh, and 
the programs themselves to pursue that. But um, so I can, I guess that's that's all I had to say. But I would like to hear if you have any follow up comments and go to a second round and then with the Q and A from the audience. How about that, George? Anything you would like to add or or, or comment to what has been discussed? Well, I, I I generally concur with everything that everyone said. Uh, a couple of things that I think need a finer point. Um, one is that there seems to be in our field and and generally in the in the college of business there seems to be this assumption that everyone should have a doctoral program and 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 i think that causes a lot of in, a lot of institutions problems because they're, they're trying to put a square peg in a round hole there are many institutions that shouldn't have a doctoral program they have no need for a doctoral program if they're if they're not a research intensive institution if they can obtain the research resources in other ways, why have a doctoral program? Uh, it, it, and, and because having a doctoral program isn't just let's recruit a bunch of students and teach them what we know. Uh, and that brings me to the second problem that I think is maybe more inherent in our field than perhaps in the other fields. And that is that uh, you got an institution that has a doctoral program and now we sit down let's put together a doctoral program committee so we put together a doctoral program committee and that and that committee's job is to decide what the curriculum is going to be and guess what the curriculum is what everybody's interested in which may or may not have anything to do with the training of a theoretical researcher in information systems Jay, we got this faculty member who's a genius in design science okay let's have a seminar in design science and we got this one over here that's really good at cybersecurity. Oh boy, now we got a seminar in cybersecurity. And we got this one that's doing work in healthcare. The problem is those aren't parts of our discipline. Those are simply topics. Mm -hmm. It's just a topic, okay? Uh, it's not a, a body of research, just a topic. It might be very rich in, 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 in the research that's there. So now all of a sudden we're training our students in a program that is fit for the faculty and doesn't have anything to do with the students, but they don't know that. So they graduate with a, with a PhD in business administration with a concentration in information systems, and they go to work somewhere where nobody is interested in healthcare IS, and all they do is publish in healthcare IS. And so guess what? They're never going to get tenure because none of their journals show up on the list. So we there's our identity crisis we don't fully understand why we have a doctoral program uh, i i you know I, I i jose was lamenting that well i had this student and we you know, told the story of converting him and god bless you for doing that <clears throat> but i gotta tell you i've taken a completely different perspective in my career i, I i've done a lot of executive education and businessmen will say well gee you know the problem with your research is is it, it it you know we can't use it and i say I, I try and tell them i say you know what and i sleep really well at night because of that because guess what i was trained to be a theoretical researcher i'm a very good theoretical researcher and what i do is generate theory now maybe someday before my dust has completely blown away from this planet something that i theorize just might be useful to you but that's not why i get up in the morning I don't care whether what I'm doing is useful to you and you shouldn't care either because here's the problem. I'm generating the theory. The problem is you don't know how to use it. You think theory is supposed to end up being a punch list for how to run your business. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it works. Theory to you, the practitioner should be a lens that you look through that tells you what should have happened. Take those glasses off and now you can look and see what did happen. If you know what did happen, you know what should have happened, you now have an equation. And the difference between what did happen and what should have happened is where you should be putting your investigation. It's where your analysis should be. So if you know how to use theory, I'm your best friend because I'm going to generate lots of it for you. If you don't know how to use theory, you're expecting me to do something that I wasn't hired to do, trained to do, and don't want to do. So the doctoral program shouldn't be well let's recruit some students and then find out what they want to do I, I i tell you i interview all the doctorals all the phd students and if i hear the word um, consultant 
or industry anywhere in an interview, they go to the bottom of the pile because that isn't who we're training. Now we have the ability to do that because our, our PhD program is very selective and we pay them to go to school. Correct. Okay. I mean, so, you know, we're, they're on our payroll. Okay. Not everybody has that, that benefit, mm -hmm. but if, if somebody's talking about industry and running their business and this sort of thing, I direct them to our DBA program. Now you're going to learn how to be an applied researcher, not a theoretical researcher. You won't ever have to spell the word generalizability because it doesn't apply in your world. Okay, but you will use the exact same scientific approach that a theoretical researcher uses to reach the answer. Now, if more doctoral programs could get rid of their identity crisis and say, we are a theoretical doctoral program, we are an applied research doctoral program, or do we even need a doctoral program? I think all doctoral programs would be better. That was my rant for the evening. <laughs> my apologies. Good, good, good. So, <coughs> anything you would like to add, Cesar? Or... No, I think Professor George is, is right. We do have this identity crisis here at my program, PhD program as well, because we are getting more and more students that actually they, they, they are not researchers or they do not want to follow academic career, but they, 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 because of some reason, we don't know why, they want to have a PhD, okay? And, and, and of course, I, I think they, they, they might get the, 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 the PhD if we had a, a program like a GBA, and we, we don't have it here uh, yet, but, but we will eventually have, and I think it's a maturation of our uh, system here in Brazil, our uh, PhD programs are, are very young comparing to, to European and, and American programs. My, my program is, is one of the oldest in, in Brazil. We have 40, 45 years, something like this. We, we, we start in 1975 when Brazil invested a, a lot of money to, to train PhDs, to, to create new, new programs and, and professors and researchers. And I, I think that, that this, the, the, oh, oh, we have the, the market of, of to professors is, is quite small nowadays. We have fewer and fewer open uh, positions. So, so our, 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 the, 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 our doctoral candidates who, who really want to be researchers, the, the numbers are going down, down, but we do have people interested in following some kind of, of study. So, I think that we have to, to, to solve this identity crisis here at uh, my school and university as well and, and make things clear for, 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 for students. I, I, I just had one guy, he's 55, something like this, just like me. And he wants to change career because of course he's an executive and he, he's got the money and now he wants to be a professor uh, to teach somewhere. So he wants to be a PhD affiliate, but you don't need to have a PhD to be a, a teacher, a professor in an undergraduate school. You can have a master's degree that you already have. Already have. No, 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 but, but, but it's not good. The, the jobs are not good when you don't have a PhD, the schools are farther away. So I, I almost asked him, so, so you want to, to have a PhD to save gas, is that that? Is that what you're telling me? Of, of course, it's uh, completely absurd. <laughs> you know, not to interrupt Caesar, but but the, these students that want to change careers, yeah. you want to be very careful that if you decide to cater to that audience and you offer a DBA program, that you don't fall into the trap of making an MBA on steroids. Okay? <laughs> yes. It doesn't have anything to do with business administration. It has to do yeah, with yeah. learning how to research in an applied community. Applied, applied it's multidisciplinary. Research, okay. But, okay. you know, there's a lot of them out there that cost $100,000 and it's really, you know, an MBA on steroids with everybody wearing yes. a suit and tie. And, and the students that, uh, don't know the difference. I, I'm pretty sure. And they pay for this and be happy and they are happy. Okay. So, so these are my, my big comments here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. So I, I would just like to ask the audience if there are any questions, if they could just go ahead and, and type them or, or raise their hands and... Uh, in the meantime, Jose, anything else you would like to add? One no, of our I... attendees, Alfred Ortiz, had, had directed a, a question to me in the chat. I don't know if anybody can see it because it was a direct message, but 
He said uh, he's a DBA student uh, in, in Madrid and wanted to ask uh, what I think about when I have a candidate for a job opening for a professorship, what do we take into consideration when looking at a PhD versus a DBA? Uh, it's a good question, Alfred. And the, and the primary consideration is what's the job? If, uh, if the job is a tenure track position for a theoretical researcher, all the DBAs go into a different pile because they're clearly not qualified to do that. Uh, on the other hand, if it's a, if it's a, a, a teaching professorship uh, in a particular area, uh, the value of the DBA properly delivered is that uh, there are thousands and thousands of highly qualified and very, and, and very strong intellects of people that could qualify to get the terminal degree in business, but can't get it because of the way we deliver it. They have work obligations and family obligations. They can't sell their soul to us for four years and, and quit work and, and, and just go to school. Uh, so a DBA from an institution that is uh, heavily research oriented combined with that person's domain expertise of some 20 years in whatever field they're in uh, makes them a very, very valuable member of the faculty uh, for the purposes of teaching. And if they wanna conduct applied research, they can. So the primary consideration is what's the job. Uh, we put our DBA on, as a track under our PhD. So from the state university system's perspective, it's just a, a terminal degree in business. And so we, we don't, the, the state university doesn't differentiate, differentiate between a PhD and a DBA. Uh, and we don't differentiate between a PhD and a DBA when we hire. We do look at the program that these people are from. But if they have a DBA and strong industry experience and, and, and a terminal degree from a accredited institution, uh, they are a viable candidate for, for the classroom. Thanks for sharing on that, George. I appreciate it. You bet. Yeah, oh, oh, if, if, if I may add to, to, to what George uh, was saying in uh, regarding Alfred's uh, question, I. I, I tell my students and, and actually some other people who ask me, is there a job at ESAN? And, and I tell them, well, not only at ESAN, but I believe that in many other schools in Latin America, at least, the deans who are hiring or whoever is, is in charge of hiring new faculty, they will actually look at, at, your, at your research and, and more than your research is actually your publications. They are at least in Latin America, they are more interested in, in your publications. If you are going to have good publications in good journals that allow them to have uh, access or better access to rankings and accreditations, they, they, want, they want you. Uh, either as, as tenure track or, or, or adjunct professors, but they, they want you, they want your research and they want them, <laughs> again, <laughs> They want your publications. Well, for the P, for the PhDs, you, you, we've all had our PhD students, you know, come up and ask us. So, how's the market looking? And and I always answer that question with a question: How's your pubs looking? Because if you have publications, you will always have a good job market. There's no such thing as a bad job market in our field. And if right. you don't have any publications, it's usually always a bad job market. Now that's right. for the PhD side of things. For the DBA side of things, it's a completely different set of criteria. Right. And, so, and, and that, that, you know, that example, when I said some places maybe shouldn't have a PhD program, if we take a look at the research productivity of the faculty and it's not strong and it's not productive, and I don't mean strong by they're publishing in ISR every day, what I mean is that they're not publishing, okay? Then, what, then, then on what grounds should, should you bring in innocent bystanders to try and teach you how to do something you're not even doing? You probably shouldn't have a PhD program. Yeah, and, then, and, and I think that that's one of the problems that we have mm -hmm. in Latin America that, that many schools are actually um, delivering PhD or doctoral programs because they, they, they haven't 
fully left the identity crisis. <laughs> yeah, you want to go and ask them, what, but by the way, why do you have this program? Yeah. What, what exactly? What organizational mission know. are you yeah. are you achieving with this program? Right, and and many are going to tell you, well, because it's it's another program that will make money for the school. In 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 to me, that's, that's for a while. That's the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, it could be for a while. Yeah. No, I mean to give you a comparison in terms of money. My my office handles both the the DBA and a PhD. We have a steady state on the. PhD of 60 students across the disciplines, all funded uh, annual mm -hmm. stipend and tuition waiver. My PhD budget is approximately $1.8 million per year. That's all cash outflow. That's 100% cost. And my DBA budget comes in such that it actually generates a net in my office of about $900,000 a year profit. So the DBA is paying for our PhD for the, right? Okay, and in this and 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 you, the 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 variable cost approach works out very well because I'm using the same faculty in a DBA that I'm using in a PhD, and they're basically right. teaching them the same thing: research methods, quantitative analysis, qualitative methods, you know, and 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 uh, and so it works out very good. But but we're we're blessed with scale. There's a lot of schools that that don't can't achieve that scale. So they're, they're really, they have to ask their, answer the question, what are we doing here? What is it we're trying to accomplish? Instead of, well, everybody else has got one, so we need one too. Right, actually, George, I'm, I'm quoting you on what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine to, to that's finish fine. to finish convincing my 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 dean and, and and the rest of the administrative uh staff uh here at the sun because yeah we actually had that idea that we need a dba which is clearly different to our phd in order to be able to have a full-time phd program funded and, and, by and maybe school. that'll work out that way but first of all you got to make sure you have the resources to have one or the other Right. And, and, and what market are you drawing and so mm -hmm. forth? Uh, and, and then build upon it, you know, start small and build upon it. But, but whatever you do, don't have it just because everybody else has one. Exactly. That's, that, that's where you end up having an MBA on steroids more, more often than not. Right. Right. Yeah. And then I would say, Thank again, you. being very intentional in separating those types of programs, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere, mm -hmm. not just if, I know you have the same faculty, but the training has to be different for the the faculty in the PhD and the faculty in the DBA. That's right. The, Advisors, the, the 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 catalog, the template that we use, the tables. I mean, the, we we work in everything to really separate the and. So it's, and there it, are faculty in there. You know this with from your experience. There's faculty that do not understand the difference between a PhD and a DBA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a finance guy come up to me, very talented researcher come up to me and he, he said, well, I, I'm considering, you know, doing, you know, chairing some dissertations in the DBA, but I'm curious, uh, how many finance dissertations do you expect to come out of the DBA this year? I said, zero. He said, nobody's doing a finance dissertation. I said, no, there might be some people that are doing dissertations in a finance area, but none of them are doing a finance dissertation. They're doing a dissertation in, in something that they have a tremendous knowledge domain and they may need finance information, but they can get that from They're the literature. Using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the DBA dissertation chair is not intended to be the content expert. They're intended to be the methods and procedures expert. In a PhD, they're the content expert. Right. So you have to understand your role because they're diametrically opposed between the two types of programs. And then the faculty have to be able to make the choice freely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like some faculty, once they understand the differences, they can say, oh, yeah, this is my passion. I am for the PhD. No, no, or, or no, this is my passion. I want to, you know, the DBA. And the same thing with the students, if they get it for the, uh, what we have done is even take the first course is, is they can change it. They can still switch. You know, you take the first course and when we go over again the differences and after the first course, you can still switch. Yeah. Still on time. And the course is going to count towards both programs. So, yeah. There's a lot of people in attendance here. I'm curious, you know, have we have we out talked to you or have we not allowed you to have a chance to ask a question? Yeah, we're please feel free to type or we're just. We're happy to up. answer questions. Yes. 
I'm just going to open it up and see if there are any questions, comments, suggestions. Oh, Alex, you are muted. Just saying it to myself, it was fine. I, I mean, I think everyone is just capturing the, uh, and, and I think we are, we are all in Latin America a bit like the finance, uh, you know, professor there and still trying to figure out uh, what difference we can make between uh, the, the, B, the DBA and the, and the doctor uh, and the PhD. Because in fact, in, in Brazil, we don't have uh, PhDs uh, because that would be in, in the doctors in philosophy. Uh, if even our let's say a more let's say more academic um, academic in the sense more uh, focused on on how, how would we, 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 we we'll focus on on the, the the content and not the methods to to, to go with uh, George's uh, so even those are doctorate in and doctorates in business uh, so this is probably something that we'll still have to mature in, in, into uh, in the future. one of the advantages yeah. that we found about a DBA is that once you really get the momentum in your program going, uh, you're gonna you're gonna actually manufacture your own faculty. Mm -hmm. We, you know, the last three hires I've done for the DBA have all been graduates of our DBA program. Right. You know, and yeah, I and I get the I get the I'm traditional saying, yeah. pushback from those people say, oh, that's academic incest. You know, you, we we can't <laughs> hire people that got their degree here. And I said that's crazy. They know more about this than anybody I could hire out on the street. Yeah. The culture, they understand the, the program, they understand the approach, and they understand the subject. Now, why would I want to go out in the open market and try and find that when I just made one? So that, that's one of the advantages is you're going to get, you're going to be able to build the program with like-minded people over time because you're going to have some superstars in there that want to go into academics. I mean, any one of us would have loved as our first teaching job to be able to teach doctoral students. No questions. No you guys, questions. You, you must be worn out. What did you know? Did they work you too hard earlier in the day? Yeah. You know that could be the case. Uh, I, I mean, it's probably early afternoon for some of you guys, but uh, over here in Brazil, for example, it's uh, eight o'clock in the evening. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I understand. I understand. You know what? Just one other thing I, I want to add. Jose was lamenting the the kind of the problem, you know, maybe a, a bit of self-efficacy problem in Latin America, uh, where, you know, gee, we, you know, we come from Latin America and we can't necessarily compete on the world stage and and uh, and this sort of thing. I, I I just refuse to accept that. I don't think I don't think your geophysical location on this no. globe has anything to do with your ability to compete and generate new knowledge and contribute. Uh, I think it has to do with the quality of your faculty, the, the, the support and culture of your institution uh, and, and your mindset. And if you feel like you could contribute if you weren't surrounded by all these people who swear you can't, move. I mean, that, the beauty of, of our industry is that we're all free agents. And, uh, and for the most part, we can do uh, our research out of the trunk of a car. So, you know, you find those people that, that want you to succeed and want you want to support, you know, your publishing efforts and the, and the, and the, the, the publishing outlets that you want. And, and you'll find out that, I don't think it has anything to do with whether you're in Europe or Asia or Latin America. I, 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 uh, I think it really has to do with the quality of your education and the, and your drive. Thank so you. I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big supporter of Latin America, you know, and because I, uh, I just don't, I, I think you're just as much of a colleague as anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, George, for reinforcing my, my belief that, that, yeah, of course we can do. I mean, it's, it's uh, as you mentioned, and, and actually we, we do have uh, a couple of our, of our faculty are actually, they graduated from, from PhDs at FIU, so <laughs> we have good. Yeah, I have a doctoral have, student, a couple of doctoral students there. 
Uh, is 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 Martin still your dean? Yeah, uh, no, he just uh, stepped down from being the the vice president for research. Okay, well, the vice president yeah. of research for your institution graduated from FIU. Exactly, exactly. He and I and studied have... comps together about four hundred right. years ago. <laughs> Not that long. Armando, Armando Borda also he he graduated from FIU. He's he's our uh, he's in charge of international programs. So yeah, and he's 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 one of our top. Uh, professors at the doctoral program here at the Sun, because he's he's really good. He's really good researcher. So, yeah, of course, of course, we have we have some some pretty good faculty. We had some we have some great institutions throughout Latin America, and and some great researchers. I it, you know they just uh, I, I don't know why I don't know why that that myth of not being able to compete exists. But I'm a firm believer that it should be dispelled violently. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We had a great session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank to you. All the guests. Thank, thank you. you.